tapping in. I was live. Yo, man, thank you for, for, for pulling us into that show. Like, off of the bat of what you said about being able to have so much fun in our youth and being grateful for that, I completely, I completely agree, right? And this, like, grounds us in what happened over this weekend at the Travis Scott, at the Astroworld Festival, um, which is for essence Travis's uh Travis's festival right it reinforces just a bit of how scary it is to be to be young at at this current moment dude like because that easily could have been us you know what I mean I like this conversation I I was I, I was ex looking forward to speak to you about this because we have grown up together in many situations where that could have been us. We've been to Travis Scott concerts before. We've been to different types of festivals and whatnot where we were the rowdy people in that space or whatever the case is, right? Um, just being young, intoxicated on drugs, just partying hard. And to see that happen, it was hard not to, it was hard not to place myself into that space as somebody that that easily could have been. Yeah, you hit you spot on with it. Like as soon as I saw that the headline, right? And I caught it later yesterday afternoon on Saturday, right? So I believe this actually happened Friday evening. And so I'm catching it when they have the full body count of eight people who lost their lives in Houston at the Astro Fest. And I was like, yeah, immediately I thought to how easily that could have been a concert that I was at, right? And how there's so much hurt that I, that immediately happens out of that. And we've also been in situations where fun turns into some that like, yeah, is, has, has lots of ripple effect after it. And so, and to be so, be able to understand that scenario and be able to picture it and understand how there's so many different people who could have and should have been more responsible, but you can't immediately place the blame on any one person. There's no, there's no simple way to, to, to talk about what should have been done. Right. It's that, that adds to the hurt. You know what I mean? And so I, I, my, my feeling first and foremost, before anything is like, yeah, prayers up and and peace up and and healing up for the families of anybody who lost their lives, the friends of anybody who lost their lives. I can't imagine being at a Bro. show and my homie falls and I can't and I can't get them back up and that's it. Bro. Or getting a call that your younger brother was one of the few that got killed or whatever. It's it's, it's terrifying, you know, my younger brothers and the reason I bring that up, my younger brothers were just at a Travis Scott concert and someone who was there explained the scene right and it's not a scene that we are unfamiliar with um it, she said it was very rowdy she said it was extremely rowdy and there was a lot of um there was a lot of uh swaying and that environment right now to like to put it to put it through the lens that that i've that i saw that right here's a good example 2013 i'm in coachella right and i'm watching the weekend as the closing act, right? So everybody was packed into that place, man. There were, there were so many people that were final stage Coachella, the weekend, 2013. It's that's the top of it, right? It was, it was packed as it is. People came early, super packed. When Kanye showed up, bro, when Kanye showed up at that stage, almost instantaneously, there was like a, a wide separation between the people that were in front of me and where I was like, it's just like everyone just went room, like just pushed up forward just to gravitate towards this person. And then very quickly, it was a wave behind me that pushed me into those people. Right. So it was like, whoo, like just a, a big wave of people just crashing towards each other, got super, super packed, hard to breathe in there, all that type of situation. Right. And that's at a, the weekend concert. Yeah. That's at the weekend concert. So, Take Travis Scott concerts, bro. This is the, the young teenagers on drugs. Like that is, like I don't want to classify it as that, but that's how we went to those types of concerts when we well, were that, there. But there's also, all right, well, there's something to be said about that, right? So there's certainly a certain demographic that is at this concert. And it's, it is typically people that have a little bit more money, right? 
or, or and some college students who have a certain level of privilege in their own way, but maybe not super paid. But like, I'm thinking of this from the perspective of I didn't go to shows when I was 15, 16, 17, 18. I didn't really start having these experiences until I was 21, 22, when I was out in college, right? And it was a privilege to be able to do that. And it was a privilege to be able to like, you know, yeah, to afford to be able to go to a concert ticket, especially to a festival for multiple hundreds of dollars, right? And there's a there's a certain sense that like when I saw what was going on here, it there's it doesn't it's not something for me to gloss over that it wasn't 18 and up that there were 16 year olds present. There were 14 year olds present. Right. A 10 year old lost his life. I'm not I, 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 I'm not sure if it was the 10 or 14 year old. I've seen that back and forth that that lost their life. But 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 to the to the point it like is that. When I think of that environment, I think of how rowdy it's been and crazy it's been. But I've also I've also thought of it in the context of myself as a young adult, right? Mm. Rather than being just a teenager. So when we talk about teenagers on drugs, that is a thing to highlight is that when we talk about the different ways that we can avoid something like this in the future, is putting an age restriction on something like this a part of that? I don't know if an age restriction would help, bro. If I'm being real, I don't know if an age restriction would help. Because you, I think this is this is the unfortunate this is the unfortunate situation that happened right? is that it didn't have to get that far. It things didn't have to get that bad if a few more things were done better within that space, right? So it kind of comes together as a a you bring in this post pandemic mania that people have that we've seen happen since we got outside bro we talking about from florida you know what i mean when just spring break would not go indoors that to bring the police out at that different type of time and just see how people have been reacting in different outside scenarios and you've heard um performers say listen man the appetite outside is wild the energy outside is wild anyways you you bring those people in then you also bring a a festival which evidently was poorly managed right like this is also indicative of bad event planning and you could get away with that if there's no if there's no if the worst thing that could happen ca- happens and this is the case where a badly a badly put together show was at least in the sense of security and of emergency response i agree with you 1000 percent, and i and i but i start with age for a reason because of the demographic of people that were there and for, for a variety of reasons, right? Like, I know at 14, if somebody's pushing me on my back, I'm a little bit more susceptible to that to when, than when I'm 18, right? Like, I'm, I'm just a, I'm just bigger, right? You know what I mean? But for a variety, for, but also, like, my sense of maturity, right? And and so there's a, there's a level of, like, ownership of what type of crowd are you trying to attract and what type of energy are you putting out there? And we can kind of circle back to that in terms of Travis mm. Scott. But I think age is a big part of that. In terms of the medical response, you're absolutely you're absolutely right, right? The way that the concert venue is set up, we have seen shows that are much bigger than this go well, right? We've seen Kanye do a few different types of concerts, right? With as much hype, to your point, about him coming out of Coachella, right? And even if that wasn't managed perfectly and you could tell even that even in that that you got a sense that there might have been some risk like nobody died right and so there are lots of there are lots of examples of this that i see like as this news becomes kind of starts to circulate that they're comparing this to and one of them is like that immediately came to my mind is was woodstock 1999 right and that's the one for for the meme culture out there right that's the one where you see that the meme comes from or the or the video comes from of DMX performing in front of what looks like, you know, yeah, all the the whole world, right? So that's 20 that's 220,000 people that attended Woodstock, right? And so over the course of that entire weekend, not that this festival was blameless, but three people died. Only one of those people was trampled. Another person did die of a heat-related illness two days later, and a third person was killed by a, a, a car, a car crash on a highway. Well, I think the car hit the person, right? And so 
What that says to me is that there are things that we can put in place. <laughs> you just saw a dude literally fly, fly. through the air. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And this, so that speaks to like, you can, you can, but you can have that and for, and, and to have it within certain parameters, right? And there's two main, there's two people that I want to talk about the resp- responsibility who bear the responsibility in that. And one of them is the event organizers, right? To have not only water stations, but certain types of barriers to deviate the crowd and strategic ways to make sure that that crowd of people can't not only push and apply pressure to the people who are at the front, but that people also have a visual of like what's going on. Both other people and security have to be dispersed within the crowd. But the performer mm. also has a responsibility to to create a sense of of community and to to remind people that we are here to have fun, but we're also here to take care of each other. We all came here for the same reason, and so we're, it's it's not about having fun at each other's expense. And we could talk about yeah, yeah. Dip, and I and I, there's a variety of different conversations we can get into when it comes to what people need to be protected from in these types of environments, but. That's what that was. Those were my immediate thoughts on this. You know, with um, with blaming the with the blame that is going towards the 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 artist, right? It's very difficult to be able to say what someone would do in that situation because the truth is, you we've never stood in front of two hundred thousand or a hundred thousand screaming fans losing their minds like this scene at the tra- at, a, at this scene at the at the travis scott concert is not a new scene to this artist there are some artists that the the their their performances and how they're received by their fans and the type of energy they share with their fans just leads to people fainting people passing out that type of thing right so not to say that there weren't red flags that this artist could have this artist could have seen, especially with the ambulance going through the crowd and that type of thing. There's there's more cues to play there, but at the same time, to to stand and say I would have, you don't know what that's like. You don't know what it's like to ha- have people be in constant pandemonium of you. You know, this when you're out and about. Forget when you're putting on these shows, and then when you do put on these shows, they high energy shows. There are people that pass out at Travis Scott concerts, so I could see a reality in his eyes where he notices like, okay, maybe the situation is a little hectic. Let me play through it in order to maintain the, the crowds, um, maintain the, the, the crowd's energy. Because at the same time, he did stop a show for, you know, the, 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 the video going around now is of him dancing as, as of him singing as the, as a child as pretty much like um, being done CPR right next to him type situation. And it is damning that video. It is very chilling to, to see, no doubt. But at the same time, if if I'm a the concept the show must go on comes from somewhere, right? That you you have a whole audience in order to to maintain their energy type situation. So I'd cut the I'd cut the artist bail in that sense. And another superstar, Drake, was on that same stage. If if he didn't see it too, or you know what I mean? Like there's there were more eyes. Sure, there are definitely, as there should be more eyes on it. And there needs to be more eyes in terms of security, and there needs to be a quicker relay yeah. between security that's in the crowd and the stage manager who's letting people know what's going on. But in terms yeah. of cutting the artist slack, I'm not, I, I, I hope at no point did I ever say that what I would have done. But, and you're absolutely right that we don't know what it's like to be an artist on that stage. But I want to focus on the term that they, the, I want to focus in terms of like, this conversation that they do have a responsibility. I'm not blaming, I'm not blaming him. I'm not saying that it was his primarily his fault. I'm saying that there, there is some thinking to be done about how we promote Astro Fest and what we, what we want it to be like. There's some tweets that he was, that he's recently deleted that I think speak to the type of environment that he was trying to create. And I get that. You want to be hype. You want to be a superstar. You want to have those superstar moments. But in terms of us not knowing what that's like and not being able to speak to what it would be like to make a decision in that moment, as you said, this isn't the first time. He is used to those type of crowds. And we also have examples of people that have been in that situation and done the right thing with a crowd, right? So we've seen... From Lincoln, we've seen Lincoln Park. There's a video that's also circulating that I think speaks to the type of energy and the type of responsibility that the artist in that moment does have to control the crowd. Right? We have this, Sean. No. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, you know, you know they're gonna hit us with the ads too. 
Who cares what Chris Pratt has to think at a time like this? <laughs> <laughs> Is the name of the podcast. <laughs> Yo. It's loading up. It's loading up. This shit. No. Are we live? <laughs> this is Lincoln Park, who is actually, I think, somebody from Lincoln Park is from Chicago. If I'm not even... Oh, no. <laughs> it's okay. It's a black ass. Support that. No, it's just chocolate. <laughs> God damn it. I was fooled. I was fooled. Oh, man. It's, it's giving. Well, it's hopefully, giving the next of... thing, hopefully, the next thing we hear is this, is, is this an example of. Uh... Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Hold up. Yo. We got a little problem up, up here. Pick them up right Everybody now. Everybody up. Sorry, you guys. We got to look out for safety first, for real. Nobody gets hurt. That's hey, number yo. one. Hey, yo. We'll play. Yeah. Let's get up if you guys are all right. Okay, watch yourselves. Hey, yo, man. We know we've been stressing all night about being cool, and this is the reason why. Let's go over it one more time. When someone falls, what do you do? When someone falls, what do you yeah. do? That's the energy I'm about. That's like, period. That's the energy I'm about. And, it's, and we do have examples of this. And we also have examples of concerts going bad. So this isn't something, yeah. this is like, we have things that we need to learn from and we need to, and that's the energy I'm about. You want to have a, you want to have thousands and thousands of people come somewhere to enjoy something that's beautiful. But if you have that opportunity to foster community and create community, there needs to be some rules about respect within community. Right. And that not only applies to physical space and picking people up if you see somebody fall in any different, in lots of different types of senses, but that also speaks to the safety of, people in in lots of various different senses right you see somebody touching up on somebody who don't want to be touched on because everybody's in a crowd and supposedly dancing nah we're not playing that we're not letting people put nothing in nobody's drink we're not playing that there's a sense of responsibility that we have as attendees and we have as attending that community and the sharing in this together yeah yeah and also you know in in name of respecting tragedies that happened over this weekend 99 people were killed from an oil tanker exploding in Somalia, I believe. Uh, so uh, sending sending love to those people. 99 people, there's a lot of people. Dang, bro. Dang, bro. Yeah, it's crazy. I think the point from all that is love yours, bro. Appreciate, like, be safe while you while you out here in the streets. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like, life can happen to you anywhere. But also, man, yeah. it's like... Love yours. Be appreciative of your peoples, man. Anything, anything can happen. But also, like, we got to look out for each other. We got to look out for each other better. Especially Love now. Yeah. For Especially sure. now. People, people are, dude, post COVID times, man, people are losing their minds, right? Like, I really do think the type of energy outside is, it's just a different type of thing. You know, people got to be careful. And even off of, having fun like i understand being young and experimenting with drugs and that type of thing at festivals but it is important to tell people like yo if you're gonna have that type of fun make sure you got a test kit with you make sure you're testing these things because fentanyl is taking people out like it's nobody's like it's it's really really bad out there and a lot of these um festival drugs that people take when they get there a lot of that stuff is laced gone are the days where you could just grab whatever pop it and keep it moving that's that's we don't live in that type of world anymore and i only bring that up because you hear of uh you hear of some reports that there was drugs being injected into people at that same festival and e epm not epmd uh uh EPMD medic, is the medic responder. Yeah. A medic responder was injected with something and had to be revived with Narcan. So like real talk, like it's, 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 it's wild out there, man. It's wild. Especially if you're going to be at festivals, enjoying yourself. We're not saying don't enjoy yourself, but do it the right way. And know like these drugs are, are laced. Word and word. And I think that speaks to the same point, man. It's like going out, having fun is cool, man. You know, having a good time and doing what you do with your friends and letting loose or whatever is cool. But getting everybody home is cool too, man. Making sure everybody's good is cool too. You know, looking out for the people that might not be in your crew, but that are also here to enjoy the same things you're here to enjoy. That's that's being cool, right? Community is cool, fam. <laughs>